I read three books this month, which is less than ever before. And today I want to talk about why that is. And before we begin today's video, I just want to put out this disclaimer because I know books are really hyped right now, like never ever before. In today's video, I'm gonna touch on comparison, the pressure of reading a lot, book consumerism, escapism, spiritual and self-development books. I'm not making this video to blame anyone. If anyone is to blame or is at fault here, it's myself because this is my experience and my old perspective. Today, I really just want to share my own perspective and be vulnerable for anyone out here that ever felt the same and went through the same or goes through the same right now. So this video is a reflection on my own journey in a very neutral way which hopefully is helpful for some of you there's nothing wrong with reading there's nothing wrong with reading a lot in fact i find it really inspiring like seeing people reading 20 books a month or 30 books a month which i could like never even dream of and everyone should just do whatever works for them and also i still love reading i'm probably still reading more than most people here on earth and reading in itself is a neutral task. It's us who make something good or bad, and it's all about our perspective. So I hope that was an, enough of a disclaimer so no one is coming for me, because the internet is a scary place sometimes. And now let's get right into the video. So before the last two to three years, I wasn't really reading a lot, like just some spiritual self-development books. And I really started to fall in love with books when I read Harry Potter and the Secrets of the Immortal Nicolas Flamel series, which was so good. I borrowed it from a friend and it was divine. This was the first time where I really sat with a book for hours because I was obsessed, because I just wanted to know what comes next. And from there on, I discovered Booktube and Booktube is a good one. I've watched so many videos, hauls, book recommendations, monthly wrap-ups. Oh, I love the monthly wrap-ups. And then also rankings and you know all the book content and it was really inspiring seeing how so many people are reading nowadays. I discovered a lot of books through that and Booktube really deepened my love for books. It became a new hobby of mine. And what I really love about books is that you can just dive into this new world, experience new perspectives and live like a new life. It really widened my horizon, I feel like, because you can just shift into so many perspectives. So at that time I read For the Joy of It and I didn't really read that much, I feel like, but it was so fun and I fell in love with reading again. <laughs> And it was all nice and fun and joyous until I fell into the rabbit hole of booktube even more. Anything in moderation is fine and is beneficial, but if it takes over, <laughs> it's not beneficial anymore. So I became obsessed with reading book content. I watched so, so many videos. And although all these videos were very inspiring, still I kind of felt a pressure of reading a lot because all those people were reading like 15, 20, 30 books a month, at least most of them, which again is no one's fault but mine. <laughs> I started to set up a reading goal for the year and all of that really threw me into the consumerism side. So I bought a lot, a lot of books. So again, I started to compare myself to those people who read 20, 30 books a month and I really felt the pressure that I needed to read more too. And then in watching all those videos, there are so many good books and I wanted to read them all and I wanted to have them all. So I bought them all and now they're sitting on my bookshelf and I'm not sure if I will ever read them. Because on one side, buying so many books is okay -ish because books never go bad. They will be here for my whole life if I don't get rid of them. But on the other side, like a book that I bought three years ago, do I want to read it three years later? Well, I don't know, like, I'm not sure if my taste is still the same because taste changes. So buying that many books wasn't really a good idea, but now I have an awesome library at home. I'm sure that I will read like 95% of the books at some point when I have the time. Not even did this pressure of reading a lot uh, led me into buying a lot of books, but also reading a lot, like 10 to 20 books a month sometimes, like not every month, but some months I did read that much, which is a crazy amount, especially because I'm quite a slow reader. Not really slow, slow, but I like to take time when I'm reading a book. I don't like just want to read the book. I have like a more slow to medium reading pace. So 15 books a month for a slow reader is damn much. And reading that many books led me into procrastination even more because I'm a huge procrastinator. I read hours on end and sometimes even read without joy anymore. Like I just read because of the sake of it, kind of, if that makes sense. So at this time I really was buying a lot, I was reading a lot. 
I was most of the time enjoying it, but then also it had many negative side effects because I kind of didn't live my life that much anymore and lived more in the books, to be honest. But at the same time, that's not the fault of the books. Uh, because I am a procrastinator and it's the same with me with watching a series. When I begin a series, I, sometimes I just spend my whole day watching the series. And at some point I just felt like I was reading for a number. A number to achieve in a month, a number that I have to achieve in a year. And reading more isn't always better, which I will touch on later in the video as well. Just like working out 24-7 or doing anything else 24-7 isn't healthy either. Everything in moderation is best and in balance. And at this point, it also became a form of escapism for me. Just escaping real life, living in a different world and kind of forgetting to live my own life. And as we all know, the first step to change is the realization, the observing. So at some point, like obs I observed all of that and I did observe it like when it was happening, but I really didn't even want it to change. But at some point I was like, this needs to change, like I want to change, I don't want to read so much anymore and have this pressure anymore. And as soon as I realized that, the pressure lifted off of me, kind of, because no one is pressuring me to read that much other than myself. No one is forcing me to buy all these books, no one is forcing me to watch all those videos. And so from there on, it slowly changed to the better. So again, reading more isn't always better. In fact, reading slower has many benefits. I feel like when you're reading slower, you have the time to really digest a book, especially if you take breaks between the book. You can really think about it, trying to integrate it into your life, especially when it comes to spiritual and self-development books. I was reading so many of the books, but at some point I just realized reading them is good. But like integrating them is even better because only reading them doesn't really have like any benefits if you know the knowledge but you don't do anything with it. So I started to read less self-development and spiritual books and focused more on integrating the knowledge that I already have. I feel like most of us we want to gain and gather all this knowledge before actually taking action, before bettering ourselves and we want to have all the knowledge, all the information and have the perfect plan and make this one huge perfect step. But I think that also isn't very good because then we never take the step. It's better to take small imperfect steps than this huge big one because most of the times we will never feel ready to do something, we just have to do it. So piling up all this knowledge from the books isn't beneficial. We should really like read a book slowly and when we're reading it really trying to understand what is it saying, how can I integrate this into my life. Yeah, just trying to absorb it and be it. Now I want to quickly touch on how I'm reading now, what changed. So now I'm more of a mindful reader. As much as I love to sit down on a rainy day on the couch with a cup of cocoa and read my book for the whole morning or the whole day, I now try to make time for reading. I don't have a specific time space that I want to read in and I have to stick to this time space, but I'm trying to read and like be more mindful about it. Like I start to read and then I see how much time has passed and then I'm like, okay, like, I've read a lot already, I know the book is pretty good and I want to continue reading, but I also have to live my life, so I put the book down most of the times <laughs> and then continue with my day and do what I have to do, like all my chores and whatever. So books are no longer consuming my life. <laughs> now I'm reading without pressure, now I'm reading without a reading goal. Earlier this year I wanted to read 100 books this year, but now I feel like like I'm already behind and knowing that I'm already behind puts so much pressure on me. So I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not forcing myself to read, but I could achieve it. Like if I read a lot of manga, which I'm currently doing right now. So I'm reading less normal books and more manga. So the amount of books I'm reading right now might still be a lot to some, but when it's mostly mangas, I go through them so quickly and it's just a joy to read mangas. Like I'm always laughing and I always have the best time reading mangas. And I'm currently reading Yona which is also so good. Now I also want to focus on becoming a better reader, like being really mindful, integrating the information. And even if it's a fictional book, really trying to, I don't know, just soak it up and learn from it. And not in a forced way, like I have to learn from this book, but like, I think it flows. I, f I feel like the lessons 
flow in and you learn through reading. Now I'm more mindful when buying books. I'm not spending that much books anymore because I have so many at home already. I rarely buy books and when I'm buying a book, it's one that I really, really want to read, like in a physical copy. Otherwise, I'm reading it almost everything on my Kindle and when I love it, I'm buying it in, like, in a physical copy. And I feel like that works really well for me. Unfortunately, I live in a very small village, so we don't have a library here. We have one like 15 kilometers away, but it's like, they don't have good books. I've been there before, so there aren't really any books that I'm interested in there. But like, if you have a library, support your libraries. And like I said, at this time, I really love to digest books and to integrate the knowledge and reflect on what did I like about this? What did I not like about this and why? This year I also started a book journal, writing about all the books I read, my experience with them, what they're about, and yeah, mostly my experience with them and what I liked and didn't like. And then at this point, I'm still watching some book videos, but I realized that I'm like, not even that much into it anymore. So I'm sticking to my favorite YouTubers and watch some of their videos. Again, I want to end this video with the disclaimer that anything which consumes us isn't beneficial for us. Anything we obsess over isn't good. This video really wasn't even about books. Like if you break it down, to the lesson that I've learned and I wanted to share. And I'm happy to hear your experience, your experience with books. If you ever felt the pressure that you are an inadequate reader or that you need to read more in order to be a good reader, I'd love to connect with you in the comments if you have any experience to share. And I wanna end today's video with a quote that I've seen in another video, which I will link down below because it's not mine. <laughs> So it is, a well-read person isn't one that has read incredible amount of books, but someone who has let themselves be deeply shaped by just a few. And again, please don't come for me in the comments. Thank you.